Good morning, Team Indy. Happy Wednesday. I hope all of you had a wonderful Monday and Tuesday. I apologize not being in school. I really miss all of you guys, and I wish I was able to be there. But I will see you tomorrow, Thursday. Just remember today, if you have any questions at all, please message me. You could do a screenshot of specific questions, whether it's for today's assignment or yesterday or Monday. Um, Also, remember that we could meet on a Google Meet Live if you want to go through some items. And um, just reach out to me at any time. All right, so today for our assignment, I'm just going to scroll through. Number one, um, go through a little highlighter. Um, Number one, look through the first few slides showing the answers to problems that you worked on during Monday's class. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, Let's go to the second one. Okay, number two, slides five through eight you will complete in your book in the Google Slides that I create on Cami, on paper, and then you can upload the pictures to the slides. So that's two, again, slides five through eight. You're gonna complete in your book if you have it, or in the Google Slides, on the Cami, if you notice I'm on Cami right now doing this. Um, For the third portion of this, slides nine through 12, our lesson, it's from lesson one, area of parallelograms. Now, if some of you had noticed in Schoology, I ended up posting who has completed the IXLs already for this week. So if I kind of hop out of that and I go over to Schoology in today's folder, once I go into Wednesday, that's the only thing that's in there right now. This video is going to be uploaded here in a moment. I go to Wednesday, go down, IXL scores. Area of parallelograms. So this is going to be very familiar for Carolina, Dessa, Viv, Cam, Joey, Mia, Paige, Jordan, Quinn, Max, Carson, Riley, Clayton, Brady, Abby, Mia, Luke, Kendall, Aaron, Braylon, Malia, Sean, Elijah, Gunner, Maya, Luca, and Braden. And some of those names, I'm really proud of you for getting this done early on in the week and not waiting till the end. Um, I know some of you wait till the end, but I see a couple names on there that I've been noticing not on there and good job. Awesome job. And congrats, Caroline. Way to get to that 100. All right, going back. So slides nine through 12, those students that have done the IXL, this is going to be very familiar. It's going to be just on paper now. And um, slide 13 is optional. Okay, so just on that slide, you'll notice it says optional, but oops, I wanted that to be yellow. All right, slide 13 is optional. And then at the very end here, I just want to make you aware, slides 15 through 18 here do have the answers from the beginning of all the way from slides 5 through 12. So this first one and the second one, the answers are there. So if you want to kind of you get stuck on something, go to that slide if you need to or just skip it and come back. Um, but I don't want you to just go to the end, write all the answers down. That's, I don't, that's exactly not what I want you to do because I don't want you to just put answers down and waste your time. I'd rather you do half of it and then check your answers. But so I'm going to start scrolling through. This is from Monday right here. These were the couple different answers, um, and questions you had as review, um, there was this type of question what do the symbols mean then you were to create your own real world example um again equal pretty straightforward greater than for that middle one and then less than i would say all of you are um if mr petrusk is 34 33 34 your age is all less than mine or my age is greater than all of yours Um, How are these three symbols useful? Well, comparing, ordering, you do it every day, whether it's out in the hallway in a different classroom at home with sports, with activities you do outside of class, video games. There's a lot of different things. Um, If we continue to scroll through, this was from also on Monday. Um, I just want to make this a little thicker. Um, This was also from Monday. If you want to go back in. Um, you'll hear to find this area length times width or base times height. And you also may see it like this where there's no multiplication symbol. 
base times height. Okay, now when you look at these bottom ones here, remember you have to make them a fraction of those whole numbers. So 28 over one, you can multiply straight across or some of you I did notice you ended up, two can go into two once, two can go in here 14 times. Now I multiply straight across 14 over one, which in sense makes it to be 14 or some of you ended up getting the answer 28 over two, and then you get 14, which is perfectly fine. All right, now for today's assignment. So this first page, 657, talks about what a parallelogram is and what is not. So they give you some examples here, parallelograms, not parallelograms, uh-uh, nope. So another type of quadrilateral, remember quad, quadrilateral, four sides, think of quads that you ride on, um, is a parallelogram. It has opposite sides that are parallel, meaning parallel, they'll never touch. So these sides right here, they're never going to touch. They're just going to go on and on forever. And then congruent, meaning these sides, the, the two that I just ended up doing, here, let me erase that. Those two sides are equal, okay? in length, just like these two sides. They're parallel. Think of those two L's. Those two L's will never touch, okay? And they're equal, okay? So I'm not saying this one over here, I'm gonna do a different color. This is, these two lines are parallel, but they're not the same size. These two, let me get a different color. Go red. These two are equal in size, but they would touch eventually if we notice. Look, they cross paths. So, not a parallelogram. Let me go ahead and erase that. Now, if I go ahead and look at, if I continue down, now these answers down here, if you notice they're pink. Um, those answers are not in your book. That's just like an answer key already. It's kind of just going through, and that's going to happen on this next page. It just talks about trace the parallelogram on the grid paper and cut it out. You don't have to cut it out. But what you're doing is you're looking for that base here. So you're going to count those squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so our base is ten. Where the height, you go right from that corner. Okay, and going down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is your height. So 10 times nine is 90. Now on these next couple pages, all you're doing is you're looking for the base and the height and you're gonna multiply the two together. So the height here is again, one, two, three, four, Going across, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and you're gonna then multiply 16 times four. I know 16 times two is 32, so this would be 64 square units, or unit squared. So you'll go through those, page, this page right here, and then on the next page, if you can have them up side by side, all it is is going along with um, it's setting up, if we like, look, um, rectangle one, six by two, it's just copying it over. So 12 by four, actually these don't go hand in hand, 12 by four. So you just go like this, 12 by four. Now 12 times four is 48. It's going straight left to right. Go ahead. See if you can answer any of these. If you get stuck, do not feel that you have to, uh, I don't want you to worry about these. If anything, message me, say, Mr. Petruska, hey, I was looking at page, this is 660, um, number 20 and 21, I wasn't quite sure about, and I'll get back to you. Now, if we continue on, this is actually the real lesson of parallelograms. Again, that first one should take you maybe 10 minutes right here. I think it'll take a little bit less for some and a little bit more for others. That's perfectly fine. And then in here, I want you to make sure you write this down if you have your book. Otherwise, you'll write it down tomorrow in class. Okay, then you'll go through. 
gives us the definition. Again, this is review, but that's okay if you're, you might forget a little bit of it. Base, height, length, width, you might sometimes hear, but one way or the other, base and the height. Now the word perpendicular means straight up and down. That's why you see this right here. That reminds you of a right angle, okay? Think of like the corners of your bedroom or corners of a desk or a book. It's a right angle. When you see anything like this, that means it's a right angle, 90 degrees. Continue through. If you want to try these two problems on your own, you can. The answers are over here on the right side. That You could grab it, move it. Oops, I might not be able to move it with my thing. It might have to be through Google. Um, yeah, I don't think I can move it through here. You'd have to end up going through the Google portion of it. Um, but let me go back, continuing down. And I just want you to take a look um, at these six problems here. Again, if you feel that you're comfortable with the whole numbers or these problems, maybe you want to go a little bit further and try this, this second slide instead of the first one. This deals a little bit more with fractions. So you have here um, in regards to a parking space. Um, and then if you're looking down here, you kind of see this table right here. Base height. Well, how would I find the height? Well, originally it's 15 times an unknown equals this. Well, let's think back from our last couple chapters. How do you get rid of multiplication of this? Mixed number, you have to divide it. So you're going to have to change that mixed number to an improper fraction. Now, again, if there's any time you get stuck and you don't want to message me, you can come back over to here and look through the answers down on these sheets. But good luck. Let me know if you need anything, and I'll talk with you all soon. Happy.